Please note that all episodes come with a blanket content warning. The books we read often tackle difficult and triggering subjects. We'll include specific content warnings in the description of each episode, so please take care of yourself and check them out. And finally, if you're not comfortable with swearing, now is probably a good time to stop listening. Hi and welcome to Hectic and Eclectic, the podcast for readers whose brains are hectic and whose bookshelves are eclectic. I'm Hope. And I'm Fia. And this week, for LGBTQ plus History Month, we're going to be talking about all things queer. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, not bad. How's your week been? Are you sure? Because you've just been stressing quite significantly. Yeah, um, yeah, I lied. Uh, I've been having a mentee bee today, so yeah. That's allowed. And I've somehow ended up your counsellor. Yeah, you really have. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so apart from today, what have you been doing with your week? Um, what have I done with my week? Oh, I had an interview um, nice. for a new job and absolutely slayed. They were like... Amazing. Yeah, I, I don't need to think about this. Um, do you want to come in next week? I Fucking like, hell. Oh, girl. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, and, I, and then afterwards, I went to a queer rave. Shit, I forgot about that. <laughs> we were talking about it earlier and it, it just really completely good. exited my brain. <laughs> it was really fun. It was the kind of like messy night out that you expect in your early to mid 20s. But I am an elder 20. Um, Gross. Read 30 in three months. Um, and I honestly had the best time. I, I still am probably hungover, and that is probably partly why. I've I say it when you get to you. our age, though, right? Yeah. Hangovers last three weeks. Honestly, <laughs> I'm, I rehydrated, I took all the painkillers, and I am still having an existential crisis. Great. <sighs> it was worth it, though. It's definitely worth it. Good. I'm so, I'm kind of devastated I didn't come. What about you? Tell me about your week. I haven't done anything. I have spent my week crocheting, period. The end. You are fully obsessed. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I can't stop. I tried to read. And even though I was enjoying the book I was reading, all I could think about was crocheting. (laughs) Okay. Do you feel like you took anything in from the book, the book you were reading? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, Hope displayed this insane ability earlier to have a conversation with me, <laughs> which got interspersed with them singing um, Ico Ico by, what's her name? Anyway, well, Bean will know. Um, so yeah, they were, they were doing both of those things while being like, hang on, I've just got two pages left to finish. And then they finished them while having a conversation with me. And I was like, sorry, what? Did you take any of that in? And Hope was like, yeah. It was the last couple of pages of um, What's the Tea by Juno Dawson, which is just here. It's oh, my God. Wow. The lighting, lighting really there. said no. Jesus. Uh, there, there we go. go. And so interspersed through this, um, Juno Dawson's put pages that are transgender Hall of Fame pages um, that just, like, tell you about a random trans person that's, like, done something good or um so yeah it's just a page it's transgender hall of fame and then it's just got like a a person and their story and then a bit of a quote from them so that was pretty much all i needed to finish reading so it was just um someone called georgina something um they were yeah (laughs) Um, she was like the first trans woman to hold office oh Um, yeah and then she held office from 1999 to 2007 so yeah i did take it in wow Mm -hmm. fair play it's only like a small amount of text though it's not like i was reading a whole page or true but you like you not only read it you also retained information if i'm talking or even like listening to someone else like singing lyrics Mm -hmm. in the background i am listening to that and not actually reading this happens when i'm writing so if i'm writing and someone says a word or i have to say a word that's different than what i'm writing i'll write Mm. that word i used to do that in school all the time yeah um actually one time um my friend asked me how to spell organism in science and i deliberately spelled orgasm yeah. mm-hmm. saw that coming yeah and um and she wrote it down and then like moments later the teacher asked her to answer the question that she'd written the answer to about organisms and she read out orgasm in front of the whole class and it was one of the best moments of my life that's cruel <laughs> it was hilarious so what have you been reading um i've been reading um all sorts of stuff actually Good. a lot of non-fic which um if you've listened to us before 
you will know that I get nonfiction fatigue very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought because it was LGBTQ plus history month, I would give None of the Above by Travis Alabanza a go. And The Book of Non-Binary Joy by Ben Pesci. Pesci? Pesci. I still haven't learned how to say that. Um, my You've had a ben. week to do that. I know. Do better. <laughs> Will do. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, they're two very, very different tones. And like, as much as they're both pink and whimsical and beautiful, um, like everything about None of the Above is very much a deep dive, very profound very detailed whereas the book of non-binary joy is like what it says on the tin it is really joyful it's very like light-hearted yeah cutesy whimsical optimistic as well Mm -hmm. super optimistic which i think is very needed and it's for sure it's sort of it's more aimed at folks who are actually wherever they are in terms of their non-binary like journey or experience um but it's super, super helpful for those of us who are just starting out and being like, what does this mean? Who am I? What the fuck's going you know, on? Where do we go from here? Yeah, kind exactly. Of um, and it's also very like um, welcoming to allies as well who want to learn more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like this would be a really, really great book to get for the ally in your life who um, really doesn't know where to start, really doesn't get it, but really wants to try. I think this is the perfect book for them. Um, so that's been really fun. And then fiction wise, I've been reading In Ascension. She's by, a big boy. She's she's large. I was gonna say, can we see it from the side? It is yes. thick. She's thick. Um this is by Martin McKinn. It's four hundred and ninety-six pages. Damn. Um Yeah, you're like halfway through. Yeah. Um Some which good going. also has a queer main character, but Great. It's really I'm still not, not gonna read it. I know. But it's really <laughs> them being queer is really not the focus of the book. Love which that. is also quite nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've been reading this week. Tell me what you've been reading this week. Um, this week I have read What's the Tea by Juno Dawson. Yes. And I reread um, Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. And I'm going to finish the week with <laughs> This Book is Gay. So what I would say is that This Book is Gay was published significantly before. Yeah, so This Book is Gay was published in 2014. And then What's the Tea was published in... 2021 oh okay so i would say if you're going to read them read them in the order they came out purely because in um what's the tea but she says that um even she recognizes that looking back um this book is gay is i think she says like disappointingly binary um it's very much about like cisgender gay men and cisgender lesbian women Mm -hmm. um whereas obviously if you don't know Juno Dawson is trans. She's a trans woman. What's the Tea is sort of um, an extension. Oh, that's to really nice. This book is gay. We love progress. Yes. And being able to recognize mm. that, okay, yeah, I did this thing. And at the time, it was great and it was like really forward and it was like, like it was something, yeah, that I needed to put out there. But then now looking back, I can see how that was problematic. And so, not only recognizing it, but taking steps to rectify it. There's no shame in saying I didn't know better at the time, but I now I do. People would say that. Yeah, for sure. So, what's the tea? It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm just gonna. I so I didn't tab it, but I did highlight it for the pure reason that I highlighted so much in here that there would be tab after tab after tab after tab. <laughs> Um, I tried to highlight it as if I I highlighted things that I liked Mm -hmm. and quotes that I liked, but I tried to highlight it as though I was going to give this to someone who knew nothing about being trans. Oh, that's smart. Because one day I might, and it's already done. I don't need to go through and be like, oh, pay attention to this bit or like this Mm. quote's important or like this thing really resonated with me. I can just be like, it's highlighted. I've highlighted it as if like someone's learning about what trans is for the first time. Here you go. This is a YA nonfiction. Let me see. Let me see. Um, so the text is quite big. There's short chapters and it's broken up into um, mini chapters within the chapters. And there's a lot of like um, fonts and doodles going on and a lot of illustrations. Yeah, and the illustrations like are very cute. Um, I'm just going to show you guys this one. Um, <laughs> that says um, gender norms and... Um, it's a person breaking free of their shackle to it. 
and going, woohoo. It's very cute. It's really cute. For me, as someone with ADHD, the doodles and changes in fonts and different sections and stuff like that help really helped mm. because it let me get distracted but still take information in. Ooh. Um, whereas I did see a Goodreads review that said the opposite, mm-hmm. that this person was like, I have ADHD and because of all the distractions on the page, mm. I found it really hard to pay attention to what yeah. I was reading. So I think, you know, everyone with various versions of neurospiciness knows their own brain better than anyone else will and for me it helped but for other people it might not the illustrator i think they're called sophia um and they put a little comic in here basically they talk about how anyone can have facial hair Mm -hmm. and basically this came from a place of the fact that this person has pcos Uh which i also have um and because pcos so if you don't know it's polycystic ovarian syndrome um causes an excess of testosterone in a body that should have more estrogen right um so that can cause things like excess facial hair um thicker darker and faster regrowth on body hair and i just think this is one of those books if you have someone in your life no matter how old they are like like i said this is a ya non-fiction but i'm 28 going on 29 and i found it interesting even though going into it i was like i'm probably already going to know everything Mm-hmm. I think this is like the book to give people mm-hmm. because it's very, um, very informative, very to the point, very non-compromising. It's very like trans people are here. Mm-hmm. Trans people have always been here. Trans people are here to stay. Get over it or fuck off. Yeah. But in a nice way. <laughs> um, and it's just the information is just really easy to digest. Like I said, all the doodles make it really fun and easy and lighthearted. Juno Dawson just writes it really well she's witty she is incredibly clever Mm. she's a fiction writer as well so she does have that like like we were talking about last week that like narrative voice Mm -hmm. or was it the week before i can't remember now um so yeah i just i really enjoyed it and actually i did learn one new thing oh my god tell me um so the new thing i learned was that um so there was a chapter talking about how transphobes will Um, sometimes especially religious transphobes will use religion as um uh, oh well the bible says it's wrong Mm -hmm. kind of thing right or my holy book says sure um and they'll use it as like a stick to beat trans people with so basically juno dawson did her research and she wrote a little chapter on what each holy book says about being trans Um, and it's really interesting and i learned that jewish scriptures actually recognize six official genders Mm -hmm. and i was i had no idea yeah absolutely no idea yeah would you like to tell me your coming out story no would you like me to tell mine (laughs) because mine i would be happy to tell mine no i feel like we should end on yours because it's less embarrassing and so we'll leave people with that thought rather than mine (laughs) okay so do you want to go first yeah so please consider this an an in-episode trigger warning (laughs) My queer discovery story is so embarrassing and I'm <laughs> I'm really about to out myself and I can't believe I've agreed to do this. Um, and do you know what? I could just make something up and none of you would know. I can't do it. Picture this. <laughs> um, we've got the internet. Um, home computers are a thing like people can afford. The average family can afford a home computer. But just the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have a family computer, and you can't make a phone call and use the internet at the same time. Oh, do you remember the dial-up tone? Mm-hmm. Um, so if you wanted to use, if someone wanted to use the phone, they'd be like, "Get off the fucking computer! Yeah. Fucking playing The Sims! Fuck off!" That's still new to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Except you don't need to get off the computer to use the phone now. So Internet Explorer is still oh. the only, the only yes. usable. Yes. Um, search engine and I was probably sort of between nine and between nine and twelve right and one of the first cds that I owned was Dido what album um I can't remember what it's called it's black and white <gasps> and the Dido writing is red and like bold oh, I have that album. and it has like um thank you yeah. and white flag on white it flag. and I loved Dido that you did I did um, and I had a little bit of like this like crush on 
not on her because I didn't know what she looked like just from listening to her um, but I had you know when like you just love someone's music and you sort of just like have a crush on their energy yes right the way they think yes slash voice slash slash you know, expressive yeah, yeah yeah all these things yeah. um and but I didn't know I was just like I just really love Dido um so I went on to fucking internet explorer um and I looked up some pictures of Dido and I was like oh she's really pretty and then I had like a proper crush on her <laughs> did you know it was a proper crush no but okay. I can look back and be like, okay, that was yeah, that was what that was. Yeah. Um, but at the time, I was just like, oh, she's she's pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, and so following that, I <laughs> I then tried to search. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Do you want me to say it for I you? I then tried to search naked images of Dido. <laughs> what did you type? Naked Dido? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> and you're like between nine and twelve. You are a tween yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and why, what were you trying to find? Other than naked pictures of Dido, like what was the what was the urge? What did you want to discover? I I don't know. Okay. And I, I feel like this story probably needed prefacing with the fact that I had never been hidden or kept in the dark about queerness. Mm-hmm. But I was only exposed very specifically to gay men. Mm-hmm. Um, not in a weird way. My mother had a very close friend. You know those close friends your parents have that become called aunties and uncles? Mm-hmm. Um, and I had one of those. He was Uncle Yori. Um, my mum later fell out with him, and so I haven't spoken to him in years. But I, I absolutely loved him. He was fantastic. He was yeah. very funny. He was great. Shout out, um, Uncle Yori. Shout out, Uncle Yori. Um, and he had three um, sons from his previous marriage, mm-hmm. and he now had um, a husband, I think, or a boyfriend or something. He had a long-term male partner. Lovely. Um, called Dennis and he was Danish and he was also lovely Danish Dennis Danish Dennis (laughs) Uncle Yuri and Danish Dennis (laughs) this is fucking brilliant (laughs) this needs to be a book it needs to be like a comic strip yeah yeah um so I was I was by no means hidden from from this side of things I knew you know I I grew up with this man Mm -hmm. and it was just it's Uncle Yuri and Uncle Yuri's boyfriend it was just and Danish Dennis. Yeah, it was just normal. There was no like explaining that had to happen. It was just how it was. Yeah. Uh, but that was the only exposure to gayness that yeah. I had was was a gay man. Um, and so when someone would refer to something as gay, in in my head, the image that that brought up was a man yeah. and another man. Yeah. I was was just not exposed to the fact that women could be gay. Mm. And so me as a young girl was like baffled by this. I was confused, right? Yeah. I was so confused because going back to the story, I didn't know I was too young to know that internet history was a thing. Mm. <laughs> and so I didn't know to clear it. Um and so my older brother who is 7 years older than me, so quite significantly older. Mm. Um, and so he was old enough to understand those things. Mm. He found this internet search one way or another. I don't, I doubt he was going looking. He might have been trying to get back to something that someone yeah. searched or that he lost or something. Um, but either way, he found it. Um, and he told my mom, he told my dad, and the, the, you know, the whole household knew. Um, and even, even then, not only did they, so they, they were like, why are you searching this? And I just didn't have a reason for them. And even then, for some fucking reason, my my parents didn't take that opportunity to sit me down and explain mm. to me that queerness was a thing that affected everyone. They just pretended it didn't happen. <laughs> And so they all had an, a, a right good laugh at me, especially my brother. Um, <laughs> fuck you, Aaron. But then I went away and no one had explained to me that this was probably coming from 
this. Mm. Um, and so I banked it in the back of my brain, never to be, you know, thought of again. But I, I justified it to myself as being that I was looking at a woman's body, that I was almost trying to look at what my body was going to grow into. Right. That was what young me justified it as in my head. Okay. Because as far as I was concerned, what other justification was there? What indeed? What indeed? Um, and then, obviously, as I got older and I got into high school and I met more people, I then discovered that girls being gay was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then very later on, we're talking year 10, maybe, when my friend Emma got into... Um, a relationship with her friend Brittany um, and they were the first people in our school to be in a queer relationship so it, you know in high school drama is what you live for 100% um, and so this was like a big thing this was a massive thing this was breaking news yeah and apparently you know it all came out that they'd been together ages and they'd hidden it oh. um, and so it, it all came out and and I, Emma was actually one of my oldest friends. Um, so I ended up having a chat with her about it. And um, I was saying to you earlier, like now, I think she'd very much tell you that she is gay. Um, but at the time she was like, I think I'm bi. Um, and I just didn't know what that was. That was mm. completely new to me. And so I just discovered this whole new thing of being bisexual. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> what, what, what is this? <laughs> um, and so then things like that that I sort of thought back to unfortunately um of that sort of that google search <laughs> that I was sort of like oh yeah that makes total fucking sense now I was yeah I was just a little queer kid and even though all the signs were there mm. nobody thought to tell me no and they probably didn't even consider it themselves because comp het is so yeah so ingrained in all of us but i, I mean by by comp het i mean compulsory heterosexuality mm -hmm. I, I think it's just another term for like heteronormativity yeah it's the expectation it's that when you go outside and you meet someone a stra you meet a stranger your expectation of them is that they're straight yeah. until they tell you otherwise mm. it's not that you judge them when they tell you otherwise it's that your automatic assumption yeah. is that they're straight. Yeah. Um, and Which it's you... really hard to flip. Yes, it is. Um, and but I you know have that... actually managed to do that. Yeah, I you? know what you're about to say, which yeah. is that I assume everyone is just a little bit gay until they tell me otherwise. Because as a very queer person, I just don't understand heterosexuality. I'm like, why? We should flip it on them. Why, why aren't you gay? Yeah. <laughs> like why wouldn't you be if you're a man i, I do you know what i get it men are gross <laughs> men, <laughs> men smell bad and um but i don't i don't men have never we we trash talk men so much on this podcast and we just want you to know that if you're a man and you're here, and you're listening. Go away. <laughs> joking. joking. I'm absolutely joking. You smell, and we hate you, no. No, 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 seriously. Both our partners Please are say. cis men. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the kind of men that would potentially listen to us <laughs> are the, also the kind of men who know that men are trash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they would be. Yeah. Because if you're a hashtag not all men man, you're not going to be listening to this, eh? Hashtag not all men men are definitely not going to be listening to two queer people on a podcast talk about books. No. So I'm assuming they are not here. Yeah. However, if you have stumbled here and you'd like to learn some stuff, like, please do stick around. For sure. Um, because progress is great. And we love that. People who don't find women attractive baffle me. Women are... Ob just objectively more attractive. Objectively, I'm sorry. they are. I'm sorry, but women have a lot more interesting features going on. And more interesting shape. Most men, through no fault of their own, 
are just box shaped. It's like looking at a plank of wood. I'm getting nothing out of that except splinters. <laughs> Get it? Wood. <laughs> Can we cut all of this? Do you know what Michael said to me last night? Um, I, I told you this today, but I think it's funny and I want to say it. So I've been, I've been having a bit of a, like, a, a gender breakdown recently. Um, so I'm, I'm non-binary, but I'm very much on, an, on a journey of how that actually works for me. Um, and I hate calling it a journey because... A gender journey, if a you will. A journey. <laughs> Can we do gender journey, but spell gender with a J? No. Stop trying to make it happen. Anyway, so my gender journey. I actually hate calling it a journey because that implies there's a destination. There may never be a destination. So that I am working on thinking about how that's okay. My gender may always fluctuate. There is a destination though. And what it's what? death. Oh my god. Turn it off. <laughs> Turn the camera off. I'm going home. Thank okay, you. So gender's not a journey. Gender's not a journey. Anyway. Um, yeah, and I said to my partner last night, who is also queer, I was like, if I ever transitioned to a man, <laughs> would you still fancy me? And he said, as long as you didn't grow a Brian Blessed beard <laughs> and then go bald, I would still fancy him. Mm. And I just feel like what he was picturing there was a himself, yeah. but like my so my partner has like a, a very nice beard. He has a really good beard. He has a beard and a bald head, yeah, which are two of like the most male associated things that we have. So even my partner, who's queer, was like, "Not too manny, please. <laughs> no, no, uh huh, mild man, mild manhood." Um, okay, so. What we thought we'd do is, rather than telling you about all the books we've read, we're going to recommend the best books we think you should read for Queer History Month. Yeah. Um, do you want to go first or should I? I really want to go first. Yeah. Go on. Okay. You will all be familiar with this if you have been a bookworm for the last sort of like four or five years. Um, but this is. Bernadine Evaristo's Girl, Woman, Other. And this is such a beautiful novel. It's cut into sections of different women and a non-binary person, hence the other, um, who are just sort of living their lives. They're creative, they're intelligent, they're fiery, they're women of colour, um, they are queer, they are straight, they are all, all types of, of different women and femmes um, and a non-binary person. And it is just one of the most beautiful novels I have ever read. It's so alive and just like buzzing with energy. And it's so like, it, it just gives you like the most incredible, diverse picture of London because that's where it's based. And then all of their stories sort of intersect really cleverly and subtly mm. and oh, it's just stunning really really stunning so that is my literary fiction recommendation mm -hmm. this is bending the binary by deborah lip this is for my witchy babes out there who may or may not be sick of the divine feminine and the divine masculine that all comes from wicca which is really, really problematic in and of itself. I'm really sorry if you are a Wiccan listening to this, but there's a lot of dodgy shit that's gone on in the Wiccan community. Um, and this is, so it's written by Deborah Lip, who is a lesbian. Um, her partner is non-binary and she has done a lot of witchy shit in her life. She's been a lot of like, 
variations of high priestesses and stuff like that. And she loves witchcraft. She lives witchcraft. Um, and this is her sort of book on um, how you um, sort of get away from those sort of binary ideas in magical spaces um, so that you're not potentially excluding people and so that you're using all of the power available to you. Um, so, yeah, that is my non-fiction slash esoteric recommendation. Do you want to um, tell us your um, recommendations? Yeah, so I've got three and then a slightly extra one. So my three are two are by the same author. So they are Sexing the Cherry and Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. The Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit is Jeanette Winterson's first book. Mm -hmm. um, so it is quite old. Jeanette Winston is an absolute icon when it comes to queer writing. She's pretty much a, an iconic name in that, oh, yeah. in that sphere. Um, queer so, royalty. Yeah. Orange is not the only fruit. This is, I'm trying to be like really careful with this because this is a special edition and it's a part of a special edition series. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and it's auto fiction. So it's basically a combination of autobiography and fiction um, and orange is not the only fruit is basically a, a bit of like a, a nod to um men are not your only option or um being female is not your only option etc mm. there are other things out there for you um the other one is sexing the cherry and i have two copies this one is extremely tattered um, but I refuse to throw it away. Is that a pineapple? Yes. Okay. Because this was my first copy. As you can see, it's highlighted. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, that then, smells good. You know that old book smell? Old book Ooh. smell, yeah. If I could, like, waft this into the microphone for you guys, I really would. Um, and then Ooh, I have yeah. a second copy, which is um, clean. It's not highlighted or anything. Clean. This story is basically Jeanette Winterson playing with fiction and playing with gender and playing with history and reality and all of those things. And it's hold up. Fucking amazing. Is this historical fiction? Sort of. The sleeves are giving Victorian Edwardian. Yes. On the cover. Yeah, sort of. Um, so I'll, I'll read you the synopsis, which okay. actually doesn't give much away. Okay. But I think it does a good job of like drawing you in kind of thing and um, so sexing the cherry celebrates the power of the imagination as it playfully juggles with our perception of history and reality love and sex lies and truths and 12 dancing princesses who lived happily ever after but not with their husbands oh that sounds great um so yeah it's really just um i can't remember what the word for it is you need did me dirty on this um <laughs> but she really just plays with the reality yeah. and it's as much a story about um our perceptions of time and our perceptions of reality as it is our perceptions of gender oh and sex sold um Fucking amazing sold. and super short sign me up so let's yeah, go amazing and then the last one <gasps> is orlando by virginia wolf can i show you my edition again mine's better yeah like mine's super tatty it's, super tatty the spine's broken it's a wordsworth classic like, this was again my university copy mm. and I, I want a special edition copy of it because i fucking love it um but i don't have one this was i think it was the centenary edition centenary so Cent centenary 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 so anyway this was the centenary edition of um, <laughs> of orlando um that i picked up while i was in london and um can't see it super well but the cover is kind of off-white on the front you have this fully grown oak leaf and like a sort of painting brush stroke against it and on the back you have a little baby acorn and just like a tiny blob of a brush stroke um and i just think that's so can i just read that quote mentioned. that's on the back because yeah, i love it. Do it, do it um so the quote that's on the back of this is the change of sex though it altered their future did nothing whatever to alter their identity their faces remained as their portraits prove practically the same um oh. so orlando 
I just, I have so much love for Virginia Woolf. Oh my God. So much love for Have Virginia you ever Wolf. read The Hours by Michael Cunningham? Oh my God. Uh, so if you don't know, The Hours by Michael Cunningham is a rewrite of Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Mm. Read Mrs. Dalloway first, mm-hmm. then read The Hours. And also watch the movie because Meryl Streep's in it and who's the ginger woman? I don't know, I've not seen the movie. Um, okay, while you're searching that up. Okay, cool. Um, so Orlando is about a man who becomes a woman. That's literally the premise of it. Um, Orlando is a young man and he goes to sleep one night and he wakes up in the morning and he's a she. She now lives her life as female Orlando and it's very magical realism because there is no explanation of it. He goes to bed, she wakes up. The end. I would that say isn't the end. No, no, but it is that straightforward. Yeah. Cool. Um, I would say the first half is slow. If you stick with it, as soon as that gender change happens, it picks up and it's really interesting. So mm. my advice would be to just stick with it because it can be quite slow at first. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's fucking amazing. This is what made me fall in love with Virginia Woolf. Mm-hmm. This was written in 1928. And in that time, to write about a transgender woman would just have been fucking mm. just unheard of. Yeah, and she does it so well and so brilliantly, and there's just no questions about it. Orlando, male Orlando, just goes to bed, and female Orlando wakes up, and she just continues on with her fucking life. She just lives and yeah. discovers and like questions who she is the whole time, but like takes pleasure in her own hands and just explores and just has a fucking great life. Yeah, and it's brilliant. Oh, it is the fucking best. It's amazing. The other thing that I was going to say is if you like Virginia Woolf already and you've already read this, pick this up. This is The Love Letters of Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West. Um, and it's literally, it's what it sounds like. They've dug out all the love letters that Virginia Woolf and Vita Sackville West wrote to each other and put them in a book. And yeah. if you need a queer love story, there it is. This is it. Whoop, there it is. And also there is a great movie that goes along with this with um Gemma Arterton playing Vita Sackville West and someone else playing Virginia Woolf. Um and it's again just a really beautiful story. Absolutely gorgeous. You haven't told us your coming out story. Oh my god, I haven't. Okay. So mm-hmm. um I basically decided to come out as soon as I realised that I was bisexual. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was like, well, I'm not going to be in the fucking closet. Um, so I'm just going to come out. And my logic was, I'm just going to come out. So then I'm not in the closet and all of my problems will be solved. Mm. The people, they will welcome me. If only. The people, they will validate me. The people, they will accept me. And uh, mm. that wasn't the reality <laughs> whatsoever. Um, and Where did you get this idea from? That the people would validate me? Yeah. Um, well, I'd recently gone from living in a very very small town um in rural somerset i finished secondary school yeah. and i i was going to college uh-huh. and i was going to college in a bigger town right. and that town was nearly a city because it technically had a cathedral great yeah i was like mm, metropolitan hub this is gonna be fucking great everyone's gonna be so diverse There'll be queer people there. Mm-hmm. I could be whoever I want. Mm. And I was like, well, Fia, you're queer. I was like, you're you're bisexual. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, shit. And then I was like... Did you always know that? Or did you figure no, it out no, at it one point? No, no, it literally happened in that second. Right. I was like, I realised I could be whoever I wanted because it wasn't going to be as oppressive an environment uh-huh. um, in which you like just had to conform to survive. Mm-hmm. Because I'd gone from living in north west london um where all of my friendship group were from completely different backgrounds completely different and i felt i always felt different but everyone else was different yeah so it was never a problem it was never a problem being different was the norm yeah and then i went to school in an even more rural village than the town i was living in Mm -hmm. and everyone was white uh-huh. everyone yeah and everyone had the same accent and everyone was from down the road <laughs> and sorry can you, was, say, can you say that again? down the road and it was 
fucking terrifying. Right. Like, I said one thing, and one kid took the piss out of me for having, like, a Cockney accent. And I, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to change my accent. So I spent the whole of that first day listening to how other people talked and then going, which of these accents that is acceptable am I going to Jesus pick? Christ. Yeah. I've got something in my eye. You really have. It's your finger. <laughs> That's such a dad joke. <laughs> Fuck off. My gender is dad joke. It's worse than being when I've got something in my eye and he says it's your eyeball. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> that really doesn't make sense. Do better, Bean. Do better. Anyway, um, so I was going to college, finally realised that I could be more myself and was like, hmm, what is myself? Bisexual. Out of nowhere. And I had come right. across this term only because um, of the boys that I was in a friendship group with who constantly went on about porn and wanking. Obviously. Constantly. In like a... The normal we thing know, to talk about. We know this is making all of you uncomfortable. We're going to do it anyway because we're dickheads. That was the vibe. So anyway... Boys are gross. Boys are the worst. Um, so anyway, I got to college and I was like, okay. Right. And then I told everyone, and just told everyone. I was like, I think I'm going to tell my mum today. Yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Then my mum comes to pick me up in the car. She's like, how was your day? And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was really good. It's just really tense, like waiting for my moment. And then I was like, once she like got onto an A road, I was like, mum, I need to tell you something. She was like, oh God, what? <laughs> like I was going to say that I'd like. You're pregnant. I was or, pregnant yeah. or I'd committed identity theft or something I've murdered and, uh, someone I've you needed help burying the body burying yeah. the boot let's yeah. go <laughs> put your foot down um and, and she was like what what and I was like I'm bisexual and she went okay just like she's just carrying on driving and I went okay is that it yeah okay and she was like well, what did you want me to do do you want me to go what and she she did that at the top of her lungs hands in the air we were on an a road <laughs> an a road oh my God. it was really stressful um but then eventually she was like yeah it's 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 fine i don't i don't care it doesn't have to be like a big thing mm. i was like i just wanted a little bit of drama <laughs> but i guess i got it in the like non-road safety of the whole situation so. right yeah. I never told my parents. Really? Yeah. I never felt the need to. Okay. That's interesting. Um, because, well, I never told my mum because I never, I didn't, I never trusted it. I never remember trusting my mum oh. um, with anything. Do you need me to do that laugh that I do whenever you talk about your gran? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. I feel like we should give some context. <laughs> But you don't have to. We can just cut the whole thing. <laughs> don't, don't worry about right, it. so my grandma passed away in 2017. And um, for reference, like, my grandma was my best friend. Um, and her death is um, not incredibly tragic, but it has, like, a bit of a, a, bit of a tragic story. Um, and it, the tragic story culminates in that I didn't make it to the hospital to say goodbye. Um, but I was, I could see the hospital like I was over the road. And whenever they tell this story and Hope's like, no, 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 no sad face. Because um, my my coping mechanism for everything is humour. Because I, I have internalised the phrase, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. And I hate crying. It upsets me. <laughs> I don't, I, don't know what I'm laughing at. I don't I don't like crying. It gives me asthma attacks and fucking <laughs> gives you sorry, this is the first I've heard of asthma. Yeah. Do you have asthma? Yeah. What? Really? Yeah, my inhaler's in my bag downstairs. Are you fucking messing? No. You've never told me this. Would you like me to show you my inhaler when no, you're downstairs? No, that's unnecessary. <laughs> Just never told me. Right. That's quite a big health condition. Because it's never it's never come up. What do you mean it's never come up? It comes up night and day when you take your uh, don't take the brown one. Oh do you not? No. Just the Can't be asked. Blue one. Yeah. Morning? Yeah. What? <laughs> no, In no, the morning. No, no, the blue's just um when you need it. It's a reliever. Oh reliever. Reliever? Hardly know her. <laughs> 
being if you're not proud of me for making that joke i swear to god right, anyway so my coping us. mechanism for everything is humor i laugh at everything <laughs> so when i talk about something sad i just make jokes about it yeah because i just i'd i'd rather laugh at myself We'd all rather laugh at yeah. you, so yeah, fine. I do have <laughs> don't right. Listen, Bean will tell you I do have moments where I really miss my grandma and I cry out. Mm -hmm. But most of the other times, because I'm now at a point seven years on where I can talk about it without crying. Right? Mm -hmm. In two, if you'd have asked me to tell you about it in 2017, I'd have bubbled like a baby. Bubbled, bubbled. What's, what's the phrase? Bald. <laughs> Blubbered. Blubbered. Oh, that's a great word. I'd have cried. But now I'm at a point where I can talk about it and I think it's healthy to talk about it. And so to me, it's funny. And so when other people get like a bit sad about it, I'm like, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> so I make them laugh about it. Where, why were we talking about my grandma? <laughs> oh, I never told my parents because I never trusted my mum. There we go. And um, because she was a bitch my whole life. And I never told my dad because... I knew that he wouldn't be bothered. Yeah. Um, and so I, I've never been in a serious relationship with a woman. Mm -hmm. And so until that happened, there was no need for me to tell him. Yeah. And even then I would just go home and I would be like, oh, I'm like seeing this person. Yeah. yeah. Or I would just bring someone home and be like, oh, this is so-and-so. We're going to go to my room now. And then I would like wait until he asked. Because he always did that with boys, right? Mm. I would bring someone home and they would come around like a few times. Mm. And then he would be like, so is this like your boyfriend? So because I never got into anything serious with a woman, I never felt the need to inform him. I'm pretty sure he knows. Mainly because like we've been sat watching a film together before and I've gone, she's fit. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if maybe one day I will tell him and I'll just film his reaction because I'm pretty sure he'll go, yeah. <laughs> What? Sorry, did you want me to be shocked? Do you want a little bit of drama? Just a little bit. All right, really quickly before we go. Um, is there a queer author or um, like a queer book that you really, really, really want to read this year? Yes. Tell me. RuPaul has a book coming out this year. I'm really excited. And I'm <laughs> so excited for it. Yeah. Um, mine is James Baldwin. I've never read any James Bond. Me neither. If you liked our show, please like, rate and subscribe as it'll help us reach more hectic bookworms. You can find us on Instagram at hectic.eclecticpod, on Twitter at the Hectic Pod, and on YouTube and Spotify as the Hectic and Eclectic Podcast. And you can send any suggestions, fan mail, that sort of thing, to hectic.eclecticpod at gmail.com and any hate mail, just shove it up your hole, really. Which hole? Any? Pick one. <laughs> Got plenty to choose from. Bye! Bye.